So now I think the cartilage problem is getting um, easier for the general uh, orthopedics. So these are the conclusion of the cartilage problem that um, varieties like vascular necrosis, OCD, OA, also condo fracture, subcondo insufficiency fracture. So that's uh, varieties. So when you look at the in the literature, the most common location is the medial femoral condyle, followed by the lateral femoral condyle, and trochlear and the patella, and tibia. Lastly, yeah. So clinical presentation: the patient may came to see you with uh, pain, mechanical pain like catching, locking, or inflammatory pain like swelling, inflammation. Okay, so. We, you need to know how to solve this problem. The placement of treatment depends on the stability of the lesion. So if the lesion is stable, okay, what you have to do is to make good vascularity, like uh, and to get dealing or let to get dealing. If it's not stable, you need to make it stable by fixation. Okay, you can use the metal screw or the bio for the also condo lesion. So if the is non-fixable lesion. We uh, end up with the savage procedure. So let's start with the first first one, first case. This is the osseocondyl lesion. This a young boy, okay, with the big osseocondyl lesion. So the way to do that, uh, we propose the technique we call the suture bridge technique proposed by Dr. Alisna from Bali. Yeah. So we repair the suture using suture anchor and pass this suture to the PCL, okay, because the OCD always located close to the PCL, okay, and then you can repair the lesion, okay, by using the suture bridge technique, yeah, to fix the this also from the lesion. So finally, you will get uh, and temporarily fix with the Kirchner Y, and then make a suture bridge, uh, like you repair the uh, rotator the cuff, okay. So that would be stable lesion like this, by not damage the cartilage at all. Okay? You just use the suture to bridge it on the PCL. Okay? You see it to look stable. Yeah. So the fixation, you can use the metal screw or headless screw. The outcome is not different, but uh, careful, the headless screw should be buried underneath the cartilage. So there's many subwash procedures. Okay? I will go in details. Okay? Um, ASIC, AMIC, MCI, OATS, ACI, OCA, so many things. So <laughs> confused. I will tell you in details, right? So uh, look at this uh, algorithm. It's made easier. If you have the small lesion, less than two centimeter, so micro fracture or OATS, is this an option for you? It's good outcome. You will have the micro fracture, you have fibrocartilage. The OATS, you will have the hyaline cartilage. But both you cannot make it in the big lesion because you have donor side morbidity. So if the lesion is being two centimeter, uh, square centimeter to four, you can make microfracture in the low demand patients. But high demand, we not recommend to do microfracture because it deteriorates over time. Okay? Or you can make both, or you make, can make uh, autologous metric induced chondogenesis, or you can do the also condo transfer okay so if the big lesion we recommend to do the autologous chondrocyte implantation or also chondro transfer okay or you can do aiming or acid yeah so let's see the microfracture microfracture is good but uh, it's good for the small lesion okay contained lesion but in the big lesion um, uh, the outcome is not so good so your limitation is two square centimeters is bigger than that is not good. Yeah, is um, that is a limitation of the microfracture. Okay, so we prefer to make micro drilling. Previously we make tapping, but before that tapping, you can create a subcondyl fracture. Okay, I agree to with the uh, first professor that be doing the drilling, and the outcome is improved. Okay, always improved, but in the lesion bigger than four centimeters square centimeter is not good okay and the progression of OA after five years after you do this so the next step this is very common nowadays the autologous matic induced chondrogenesis is a one stage surgery okay? so it's good for the uh, medium size like 
two square centimeters. So the good thing is that you can early mechanical stability and the cartilage regeneration. And the collagen membrane is fixed over the uh, defect. Okay. So uh, the mid-term and long-term outcome is pretty good. Overall improvement functional score improved from three years to seven years and a good quality repair tissue on MRI. Yeah. So the rate of return to sport is uh, in single lesion is very good, nearly 100%, but in multiple lesion, uh, about 40%. So from the systematic review, the outcome of arteriosclerosis metric induced chondrogenesis is better than microfracture in terms of IKDC and VAS score, okay, and revision rate, okay. Next is the means cartilage implantation. Okay. They means the cartilage and put into the defect. Okay, and uh, fill the defect. Like this boy, he's 30 years old. He has tackle and has knee pain and also locking. So he has the cartilage problem. We uh, get in and we clean his um, lesions. And we found that he has a loose body. Also, we take this loose body out and we take the cartilage from this loose body and then we mix it, okay? And we make a mini uh, incision and mix this cartilage into the defect and then fill the defect, okay? Like this, okay? So that's cobra and then put the scaffold, okay? And put the glue on the top again, yeah. So the, from the study, the outcome is pretty good for this technique. And the next one is the osteochondral, osteochondral autograft transplantation. That's good uh, for the small defect, but if you have big defect, you don't have enough donor site. So uh, the recommend is uh, the lesion less than two centimeters or less than four square centimeters. The long-term outcome is pretty good because, because this is a higher lean cartilage. It's good up to 72% and a very good outcome at, at the femoral condyle followed by tibia, followed by patella and trochea. Be careful if the lesion bigger than four square centimeter, you will have the donor side morbidities, okay, after the surgery. So this is the outcome of the odds. In long term, for 10 to 25 years, the outcome is pretty good. And also it's good and shorten the return to sport because it's fixed and stable right away. The patient can return to sport faster. So, next step is to use the autologous cartilage implantation. Okay, that uh, two-stage surgery, you need to culture the cartilage first and then it's very really costly. So now there's a two and three generation, okay? But in my practice, I rarely do this because I, I found that it's, uh, you're doing sec two-stage surgery, the patient not happy, okay? And also it's good for a very big lesion, more than four square centimeters in my practice, very few patients have really big lesion like that. Okay. So but the outcome is pretty good. 91% in the second look, second look arthroscopy and 86% in MRI. Okay. But it will be poor outcome in the last lesion and older patients. So this is the outcome. A good defect filling on MRI, 100% at two years and 74% at 12 years. Okay. Outcome is pretty good but you need to choose the proper patients for this uh, ACI. The outcome will be poor if the patient have high BMI and previous surgery. So the way to do that, you uh, put this and also put the fibrin glue to seal it like that way. Yeah, it's good for the big lesion. And nowadays that's a single stage because two stage ACI is not popular. Become more popular if you use the single stage. Okay, so you can harvest the cartilage and you mix with the metal cells and you can inject into the lesion. Okay, this is become more popular, but very high cost. Okay, you can uh, intra -op, mix the chondrocyte extraction with the metal cells. Okay, so the uh, single stage outcome uh, now is not too many papers. The IKDC at one year is good at, and success uh, lesion filling is about 67% on MRI, okay? And biopsy have 71% higher lean cartilage after the surgery. 
Next step is to do the osteochondral allograft. This one we use it for the very big lesion. If you have the fresh osteochondral allograft, that would be good. Yeah. So the good thing is that you can use it in very big lesion, deep lesion and revision surgery. Okay. And you can restore to have a hyaline cartilage. So it's good if you have fresh one. Okay. If the patient have like um, he donate the organs. Okay, donate the heart, donate everything. You can harvest the cartilage at the same time. You can do emergency cartilage surgery for this patient. Yeah, this is the outcome of the osteochondral allograft. Survival rate at five years is 86%, at 10 years, 78%. So high TB osteotomy, I always do that if the patient have axis deviation and also have bipolar lesion. So you can unload the compartment. So just cartilage surgery is not enough if the patient have too much load. Okay, in my practice, I do HTO and also if, if the patient have bipolar lesion at the patrofemoral joint, I'm doing the cartilage surgery together with the uh, tibial tubercle osteotomy. You can reduce the, the load to the patella up to 30 to 50%. Okay, it depends on how much you lift up the tibial tubercle. So this patient has uh, nine year, nine months of knee pain. She has, uh, she's a runner, she has so much pain and she cannot run properly. You see that she has a flap. It's very painful. So first we need to remove the unstable cartilage. So the trick is that you push and your assistant to push the patella to the lateral side and your portal should be very low, it's coming from underneath. And then you can do the microfracture and you use this half pipe to guide you because the KY is too soft. If you use this guide, you can follow the half pipe and you, then you can make a good microfracture. Okay? Because um, the microfracture on the patella is not easy in practical. And then we can inject the, this is the autocus colloxide induced chondogenesis. Okay? The second one, this patient has the patellofemoral joint pain and severe crepitation. Okay. From the intro, you see that she has very bad cartilage, okay, like that. And this is a bipolar lesion. Okay. So if you're just doing the cartilage surgery, I think it will be fail. Easy, when you test the patient, the patient has severe crepitation when you move. Just cartilage surgery, not, you cannot, it will be fail. So you need to unload the patellofemoral also, you see. It's bipolar lesion, it's on the trochlea, on the patella. So what I have done is I do the um, tibial, tibial tubercle osteotomy. Okay, then first I uh, repair her cartridge using the scaffold. Okay, and also inject the uh, Bmax and fibrin group okay, in the joint. Okay, first you manage her cartilage like that. Yeah, and then followed by the tibial tubercle osteotomy. Okay, so we leave up about one centimeters. So that can reduce the ten, the load to the TB, uh, patellofemoral joint about 30 to 40 percent. Yeah, and then I put the graft underneath and fix it with the screw. Okay, like that, and fix it with the screw. Okay. Okay. Yes, like that, and the patient is doing very well after the surgery. So we let the patient walk right away because the TTO, you don't need to protect the weight because the, you can transfer the, weight, the load from tibia to femur. Okay? And after that, two weeks, we start to make a length of motion and she's really happy and now she come back to be a runner again. She's a marathon runner. Okay? Okay. Next one, she's the basketball player. She has the medial joint line pain. Okay? And she had the uh, also necrosis, you see, when you have also necrosis, looking for the meniscus root, this is very really common association, about 80%, yeah, so she has meniscus root tear, okay, so when I get in, I make a drill holes, they are packed, this is why not, I publish this technique using why not for root repair, okay, so when you have that, then you make a good microfracture, okay, and then, we also inject and then we do the high tibia osteotomy. Okay. 
So we cut off the axis. And the last patient, this is my friend. He's a marathon runner. And he uh, had pain for one year. He cannot run. He want to be um, triathlon. I look at his MRI. He has a footiness cardiac loss. And also you see axis deviation. Yeah. He said, uh, please doing uh, the cartilage repair for me. Without HTO, you have bad cartilage. You have axis deviation. You need to do big surgery. So finally, he's accept. I do the cartilage repair for him at HTO. Okay. And this is the uh, follow up. So, uh, this is two years after surgery. The patient has good regeneration of the cartilage. Okay. And you see the axis collection is good. And this is after surgery. I protect the weight at the beginning yeah, for him. And now he come back to be the Iron Man again. Yeah, he's so happy. And he just sent me the pictures he won in his uh, tournament. Yeah very happy. So in summary, the cartilage problem, I think uh, it's not too far from us. And actually in the past, I tried to avoid cartilage surgery, but actually when you get in, you always say this, see this problem. And I think one step, surgery become more, more popular. If the lesion is stable, you can enhance the healing, okay, by making a stimulation. But is it unstable, you need to fix it, okay? Is it non-fixable lesion, you need to find a Sawas procedure. Look at the size. It's small size, micro fracture, all is good. Medium size, you have many options. But big size, you have the ACI and also condo transfer or AMIX. And if you have this um, problem on the too much load, you need to unload the medial compartment and patrol femoral compartment by STO, DFO, or TTO. Otherwise, the outcome will not be good. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.